These elephants live in a swamp area that's unique to our planet. But now, in just a matter of months, this oasis could be gone, and with it, the place that the elephants call home. Politicians in South Sudan are reopening an old wound. They want to move ahead with a century-old mega-project, the Zhonglei Canal. The 386-kilometer-long canal is meant to divert water from the White Nile and send it to Egypt, a distance longer than Paris to London. Conservationists warn that the mega-project would desiccate the world's second-largest wetland, impacting its rich wildlife and the rains on which the region and local communities depend. Reviving the canal project could be a catastrophe for many of South Sudan's future generations. These elephants live in a swamp area that's unique to our planet. But now, in just a matter of months, this oasis could be gone, and with it, the place that the elephants call home. Politicians in South Sudan are reopening an old wound. They want to move ahead with a century-old mega-project, the Zhonglei Canal. 
The 386 kilometer long canal is meant to divert water from the White Nile and send it to Egypt, a distance longer than Paris to London. Conservationists warn that the mega project would desiccate the world's second largest wetland, impacting its rich wildlife and the rains on which the region and local communities depend. Reviving the canal project could be a catastrophe for many of South Sudan's future generations. The Sud Basin spans across the length of South Sudan, and its rains and floods have acted as a climate regulator for millennia. Seen from space, it is a giant green smudge where the White Nile spreads out across flat, arid land. It is Africa's largest freshwater wetland. In the wet season, the size increases up to 90,000 square kilometers and gradually decreases to about 42,000 square kilometers depending on high seasonal flood. In an otherwise dry region of South Sudan, it moderates floods and local climate, maintains extensive groundwaters, captures carbon, and acts as a wildlife refuge. The Sud is home to thousands of crocodiles, hippos, elephants, and zebras. In total, more than 100 mammal and 400 bird species live here. The Sud also sustains one of the world's largest mammal migrations in which around 1.3 million antelope move east each year across hundreds of miles of open grassland from the Sud to Gambela in Ethiopia. The edge of the Sud is lined with small fishing villages. The locals are called Dinka and have lived in these lands for centuries. They rely on the rich fish stocks of the wetland and can catch up to 30 kilograms of fish a day. The ones the families don't eat will be dried and sold to villages nearby. Sadly, much of this intact ecosystem could soon be lost. The Sud is under threat of being turned to desert by the revival of the half-completed Jonglei Canal that would divert the Nile River away from the wetland and shorten its route north to the Mediterranean Sea. This would be a problem for not too obvious reasons. The Nile waters take more than a year to pass through the Sud Swamp. During this journey, around half of the flow evaporates in the tropical sun. A canal would radically reduce this evaporation. Hydrologists say that while cutting evaporation from the swamp may deliver water to Egypt, it will reduce rainfall for farms and rainforests across South Sudan and neighboring countries. The canal's supporters, on the other hand, point out that it would not entirely dry up the Sud, merely shrink it. Yet how much is uncertain. Some ministers in the South Sudan government hope the canal will also reduce flooding around the swamp, which forced some people to flee their homes last year. But South Sudan's Minister of Environment is fighting a rearguard action against the canal. She announced that she will not approve the resumption or completion of the canal because of the ecosystem services that the Sud provides to the nation, the region and the world. Even a partial loss of the Sud would be an ecological disaster, and the idea that the canal can save water by reducing the evaporation loss in the Sud is misguided. Hydrologists can affirm that the evaporated water is not lost. It moistens the air and creates rainfall downwind that maintains forests and crops, which are important for local communities. Especially for the Dinka, their fishing grounds, and their cattle herds. Dinkas are nomads. In December, after the rainy season, their families move into the wetlands, pitch camp and stay there until the Nile floods the pastures again. Right now, the Sud provides an incredible list of benefits, both environmentally and economically. A 2020 assessment for the Nile Basin Initiative put the total economic value of the Sud at 3.3 billion US dollars. But all that could easily be lost forever. Once the canal exists and the Sud Marsh is partially drained, it will be impossible to return to the previous state. What's more, this scenario isn't just a prediction on a piece of paper. It's already very real. Here, at the abandoned site of the half-completed Jonglei Canal. 
It's one of the strangest scenes in Africa. A dry excavation, 76 meters wide and up to seven meters deep, ending at the bucket wheel, a 2,300 ton laser guided digging machine as tall as a five story building. Lucy was brought here in 1978 and her 12 giant rotating buckets steadily dug the canal for six years. By 1984, two thirds of the intended canal had been excavated. Then, work was abruptly interrupted by a 22 year civil war. After the war had ended, some of the new country's ministers wanted to complete the canal. They now see the Sud not as an ecological asset, but as a threat. In 2020, Egypt's and South Sudan's water and irrigation ministries agreed to launch joint projects on the Nile. And during the early summer of 2022, in what many see as a prelude to finalizing the canal, they announced plans for massive dredging operations in the Sud to relieve flooding. Weeks of public debate were sparked by the arrival of a 21-truck convoy from Cairo which carried dredging equipment. In June, the dredging machines removed vegetation from 30 kilometers of waterways in the north of the swamp. Meanwhile, the Environment Ministry announced that it wasn't informed. They said that unless and until environmental and social assessments have been completed, any dredging of the river is illegal. In July, South Sudan's president, Salva Kiir Mayadit, had no other choice but to temporarily suspend all dredging activities. Still, the pressure on South Sudan from Egypt to carry out dredging and resume canal digging continues to grow. The question remains if and how long South Sudan's environmental ministry can stand the pressure. Conservationists hope that the heavy machines stay off forever, because for them, the Sud needs to be recognized as a massive natural asset, vital to future peace and prosperity. <laughs>